Hello and welcome to today's session, a short talk covering questions to ask your child's school about their next steps with regards to their careers. My name is Janine Drew and I'm a Futures Lead here at Witherslack Group. Um, Futures is an initiative that's been set up to raise aspirations amongst our young people and to support them into employment. It's an initiative that is available to current pupils as well as past pupils. And that's one of the key beauties of the programme is that there's no upper age limit on it. So if you've been a pupil at, at a, with a Slack school, then we're here to support you still. OK, so my role here at uh, with a Slack group as a futures lead is relatively new, but I've been with the group for almost nine years. And my previous role was working with parents and carers to secure places at our schools and also to work with the local authorities who refer those young people over to us. Uh, this is a more recent role. Um, on a personal front, I am a mum of, of a daughter who has additional needs and um, she's in year 10 at the moment. So she's at that right age of uh, us having those discussions around what it is that she'd like to do when she leaves school in a few years time. So I can have, um, I do have some personal experience to draw on as well. Okay, so today, as I say, we're going to have a little look at how you can work with your child's school uh, to best improve their possible uh, opportunities and their experiences and their outcomes. So open communication with school is really important. It can really empower your child's career and their journey that, that lies ahead. And that seems pretty obvious. And the next thing I'm going to say is also pretty obvious. But I think sometimes it needs you need to kind of remind yourself of where to start in all this. And the best place to start before you speak to your child's school is, of course, to speak with your child. Again, I say it sounds really obvious, but it's really important to have a chat with them. Have a little chat and find out from conversations, whether that's uh, over the dinner table or whether it's over uh, an, an activity that they're enjoying. You know, it doesn't have to be a, a formal sit down. Let's have a think about what you want to do when you leave school. Uh, this is conversation that you can weave into any part of the day or evening. Um, so have a chat with your child. Find out what it is that they want to do. What do they want to do when they grow up? You know, is there a dream? We always, uh, as adults, I think sometimes we can lose sight of what our dream is, you know, what our dream might have been when we were their age. But it's always good to revisit that and ask your child, what, what is the ultimate goal? What is the dream? What would they love to do? OK, it's really important that they're happy in life. And I think most parents of children with uh, additional needs if you ask them, the main thing that they will answer with is for, for their child to be happy. OK, so academic qualifications and, and goals and achievements are really important, can be really important. But I think as, as a parent, we, we just want our children to be happy in the first place. So have a chat with your child, find out if there is a dream, what do they need to do to get to that dream? You know, is there a certain route that they need to follow? Is there a pathway? Are there academic goals that they will need to achieve to get there? Uh, are there any personal goals that they'll need to achieve to get there? And any certain qualifications? Ask them what they like doing. You know, ask them if they uh, have particular subjects at school that they enjoy. You know, what subjects do they like? Because they're more likely to achieve in life if they're doing something that they enjoy. So ask questions around that. If they don't know the answer to any of these questions, that's absolutely fine. You know, I think we again need to remind ourselves as adults how many of us knew where we wanted to be or knew what type of role we would be in at, at the stage we're in now when we left school. Probably not many of us, you know. So have a chat about all of those things. And I think what's really important is to keep an open mind um, and for your child to keep an open mind. There might be jobs that they absolutely don't want to do, you know, so telling them to keep an open mind about something that fills them with dread and fear or, or is around a subject that they absolutely don't want to venture down that road um, in, then, you know, bear that in mind as well. You know, as I say, they need to be happy in what they do. And I think one of the most important things to remember in all of this and to, to remind your child is that life is a bumpy, bendy road and things don't always go to plan, but that's OK, too. It's just about learning how we 
change and how we adapt to things, which I know can be very difficult for a lot of young people with SEND. Um, so this is why preparation is, is really key. Um, but do remember that, you know, if things don't go as planned, it's absolutely fine. There's always another route or another option. OK, so in terms of speaking to your child's school, who is the best person for your child to speak to? Who is the best person for you to speak to as a parent carer? And um, this, again, seems like a very simple question to ask. But in some very large schools, some mainstream schools, what you'll tend to find is that, you know, that many will have careers leads. And um, some have years of head uh, that might be the best person for your child to speak to. Or you might find that your child has made a great connection with another member of staff who, who doesn't fit um, in either of those roles. Um, and that's absolutely fine to talk to them about careers as well. They might not have all the answers, uh, but if that is the go-to person that your child has a connection with, then the school, I imagine, would be absolutely fine uh, for your child to have a chat with them about things that they might like to do when they leave school and what that pathway might look like. Uh, that member of staff might then call on the careers lead within the school and maybe some joint conversations can take place. It's always good to remember as well that schools have external careers advisors coming in and that usually happens from around about year nine and um, so it's always good to know um, that there is someone else there that's detached from the school that is coming in to give independent ad advice and guidance to your child other than the key members of staff at the school it's a really good time of um, a, a child's uh, secondary education uh, for the external independent advisors to come in and usually around about year nine young people are looking at what options they're going to take for their GCSEs uh, for the following academic year so the time is really good having said that if you are listening to this and you are suddenly finding yourself um, in year 11 or your child is in year 11 at the moment and you're worrying that you've left it too late then don't worry because it's never too late to start talking about your child's career and, and pathways uh, for when they leave school. So, you know, don't worry if, if your child is in year 10 or year 11 now. Uh, now's a good time to have those conversations with school to get in touch. Next up, we are going to have a chat about careers events. So careers events. Um, you'll find that school might run some internal careers events. Um, and that's a good question to ask, um, to find out if they're running any, when they will be happening, um, to find out who will be exhibiting, uh, which businesses are coming into the schools um, to talk to the young people. Careers events are a great way of um, your child um, having the opportunity to go around New, a number of stands uh, to speak to a variety of different businesses um, from many different industries. So that's a good question to ask. Exhibitors are usually very happy to chat away to students um, and to talk about career pathways. If you want to get into this particular career, these are the sort of qualifications that you might need, or this is the, the pathway that you might need to follow. So they can talk about various routes into uh, particular careers. Ask your school if they are running any events that will allow you as a parent to attend as well. So quite often what schools do is they will uh, potentially run a careers event during the daytime that the pupils can attend with their teachers, with their friends. They can have a good look around. And then sometimes that will remain open or reopen again later in the evening and parents can join. I think it's really important to ask that question. Uh, quite often careers uh, activities happen within schools. Parents don't always know. Parents and carers don't always know um, what's happening. So it's good to find out if there are any events and if you can go along as a parent carer yourself. If your child has additional needs and attends a mainstream setting, um, sometimes these events can be quite overwhelming 
a lot of secondary schools can have a minimum of a thousand pupils in. Now I know that's across five year groups, um, uh, five year groups, but um, the careers events are usually aimed at pupils from year nine, year ten, and eleven. Um, that's still a lot of pupils. So as I say, if you are the parent or carer of a child with additional needs, and that's going to prove difficult, then again, have a chat with the school, see if you can turn up half an hour earlier, and what, what adjustments are the school making for uh, children with additional needs so that the event itself is not too overwhelming for them, and potentially they can come in a little bit earlier and have a look around while it's a little bit quieter. Um, if your school is thinking about things like uh, noise levels uh, for some young people uh, with autism, for example, sensory needs, that can be a really difficult environment for them to be in. So ask the question and see if you can get in ahead of the crowds. In terms of external career events, again, ask the school about these. I know that in this day and age when you can um, do online searches very simply, um, it seems very uh, easy to think, well, I'll just do that bit myself, but actually ask the school. And um, the reason for that is they'll know what's available, uh, what's available in the local area, what's coming up. And actually, a lot of the time, there are many careers events that are taking place. And ideally, what you would like for your child is, is, is a careers event that's taking place that's aimed at school leavers, yeah, or 16 to 25 year olds for, for young people. So ask, ask the school if they know of any events that are coming up. Exposure to the world of work. What does that mean? Yeah. So you want to find out from your school how they get your child uh, employer ready. You know, what are the employability skills that they offer? Do they have lessons during the daytime? Do they have timetabled activities around employability? You know, does the school support young people with things like how to write a CV, how to pull together a personal statement, you know, how to put, fill in application forms? I know all of these will vary depending on which job your child is applying for, uh, but generally just to get them practicing and um, doing CVs, doing personal statements and things like that. Job searches, how do they go about you know, looking for a job in the area that they want to, where do they start? Is it all online? What other options, you know, should they be looking at? You can ask your school about all of these different questions around employability and getting your child ready uh, for the world of, of work. Um, can the school support young people with these activities? So not rather than just teaching them how to write CVs and you know, where to look uh, for, for jobs and things like that. Can they actually support them in doing so, you know, so that they get some applications out and sent off uh, before the, the end of the academic year? And then in terms of, of exposure to the world of work, um, have a chat with your school and find out what they do in terms of work experience, okay? So work experience nowadays tends not to be um, one week or two week blocks um, that they used to do many years ago, um, but maybe taster sessions where a young person can go out into a workplace. Now, a lot of the time, young people and parents alike may focus on what it is that their child wants to do when they leave school, and they'll focus on trying to gain some work experience in that industry or in that particular, um, in a particular job or a particular organisation where the young person may want to eventually end up. My advice would be don't limit yourself to um, work experience taster sessions or days that are in other industries, okay? Because what you tend to find is, is that, okay, that might not be the role that your child wants to go into, might not be the area um, of employment that they want to go into, but actually um, gaining some experience of maybe an office environment or a retail environment, it does provide them with experience of skills that they will need to um, develop uh, that will be useful in any job that they do. Okay, so working with others, uh, working uh, with customers, you know, um, if I use the example of maybe like a, a retail environment, you know, working at the front 
of, of the shop where your customer facing, you know, working in the back room where you might be sorting out stock or doing inventory or maybe taking a phone call. It's all of those things that they can gain experience around transferable skills. So again, don't limit um, the work experience opportunities for your child just because it's not a job that they want to go into or, or an industry that they want to go into. You know, keep an open mind when it comes to work experience. Ask the school um, about guest speaker sessions. You know, do they have any plans to bring industry into the school? You know, have they got anyone lined up to come in and talk about a particular role or a particular envi environment, a particular uh, a job, a particular sector that might spark an interest with the young people? So do ask the school about that because exposure to the world of work is really, really important. Employability skills we've already covered. And then pathways. Just have a little think about the pathways that your child might follow when they leave school. So there were always uh, traditional pathways uh, to follow. Um, some people would leave school and go straight into employment at the age of 16. Um, some people choose to go uh, on to further education, to colleges, to gain certain qualifications before going into employment. And then for, for some pupils, they would then, rather than getting employment, would go on to higher education, to university. But things are changing um, and things are changing quite quite differently and quite dramatically uh, to previously, you know, the traditional pathways don't always have to be followed and um, there is a change in law now that if you although the legal age for leaving school is is 16 a young person must remain in some form of education until they're 18 so that could be um, a full-time education when they leave school or it could be going into maybe an apprenticeship um, and the beauty of apprenticeships and they've changed a lot over the years as well uh, probably not how uh, certain generations remember them. Uh, but the beauty of apprenticeships is that usually a young person will gain an apprenticeship and they will attend a workplace for four days of the week and be paid for that. And they would attend a college for one day of the week. So they're getting the, the work experience of doing the job alongside getting the training, the qualification that they need um, at the same time. So apprenticeships now are wide and varying and um, it's a very good option for a lot, a lot of young people who want to leave school at 16 and get a job. Yeah, because it's still given that one day a week where they're at college and they're still involved in some type of, of education. So from these pathways, uh, your child might want to start thinking about what qualifications it is they need to get onto each step of, of the pathway. So have a chat with your child, have a chat with the school, find out from the school what their estimated grades are going to be and whether that's going to be enough to get them to the next stage um, of, of their chosen pathway. A lot of for further education uh, colleges make conditional offers, offers to young people based on uh, the outcomes of, of the GCSEs. Um, so I think it's important to remember that whilst that is something to aim for, um, as I said earlier on, things don't always go to plan. And if your child doesn't achieve the grade that they need, then it's important to have a chat with your current school, but also with the further education uh, establishment where they, where they have the conditional offer and have a chat with them to find out what if my child doesn't get the grades that they need, um, you know, and they can maybe reassure you around um, what the next steps might be and what opportunities there are to resit to some of the, some of the qualifications. Um, maths and English usually being the more important um, of, of the subjects, but of course, if if science is, for example, required. Uh, because your child's chosen pathway requires them to have science GCSE to then move on to, you know, a, a further uh, qualification, uh, then have a chat, um, not only with the school, but also with 
uh, the college that your child is looking to looking to attend. And as I say, apprenticeships are something that your child can uh, look at um, in terms of uh, having employment and education as well. So they kind of tick tick that box. And that is probably it from me, I would say. Um, one thing that is worth mentioning is that if your child is looking to go through um, maybe into the armed forces, um, which differs just slightly, they, they can uh, join the armed forces from the age of 16 when they leave school, uh, but they do need parental consent uh, to do that. So hopefully that will have given you uh, an idea of um, some questions that you can ask your child's uh, school to help with next steps. And I'm just going to leave you with this little quote that's been a favourite of mine for many, many years, which is, find a job you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. Thank you very much. <laughs>